She says, I have a brain tumor that doctors were pretty sure were going to kill me. And I beat it. And do you want to know how she told us she beat it? Hemp oil. For those of you that have brain tumors, please do me a favor. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to me. Forget I even said it. Look up hemp oil girl. Because that girl knows more about this subject than I ever want to know. It, it terrifies me. I'm not afraid. I own a tranchaw. It, it's rather mean. Uh, it's named Choppy. I own a, a, a ball python. I, you know what? I'm not afraid of any of that. I'll, I'll hold Choppy on air. As a matter of fact, if somebody leaves me a message, I'm going to check my, do I have anybody online right now? If you're watching me, you are invited online. Nobody, uh, I got a few listeners, I got nobody online. Uh, if you want to join me, I will hold Chompy on air just so you can see it. Uh, Chris, <laughs> Chris Nell's running. Um, my point being, I'm not afraid of anything. I got snakes, I got spiders, I'm bring it on, you know I've never been bitten by any of it. It's going to happen sooner or later. Choppy is going to nail me. It's the meanest tarantula ever. But it's nice to me. Um, <laughs> Christelle's still running. Um, let me say this. I'm terrified of anything that has anything whatsoever to do with, like, illness. Or like, so I'm not afraid to die. I'm a Christian. I'm not a very good Christian. Uh, when it comes to the great Christians of the world, I am at the absolute bottom. Christelle is nodding. That is not good. But I'm being real. I'm not a spokesperson for the Christian faith. I am not that kind of person. I am not a Chuck Swindoll. I am not a Hank Hanegraaff. I am not an Alistair Begg. I am the worst example of Christianity that ever lived. But, I'm terrified of dying like my dad did of cancer. Terrified! My point to all of this, to wrap it up in a nice, neat nutshell for all of you, is that there are times that medical marijuana and derivatives of it, such as hemp oil for brain tumors, again, hemp oil girl, look her up, she's amazing! She is beating it with this stuff. She's talking about rock climbing. She's on it, guys. And there's something in this. So, do I care if somebody wants to smoke a bowl? No, I really don't care. Do I care? Have I ever smoked a bowl? How many of you want the real deal? Guys, I'm in a band. I've smoked a bowl before. My point is that this isn't what this is about. You can be the most anti-marijuana person ever. You can be somebody that will click my show off because I confessed to smoking marijuana a while back. If you want to be that person. But before you log off, would you do me a favor and realize that I'm not talking about getting high. I'm not going to be up at 4.49 in the morning to talk to you about being high. If you can't figure out how to get high by yourself, you're an idiot. I'm talking about something that is curing the biggest fear that I have in the whole world. I'm, again, not going to be up at 4 now, 50 in the morning if it's not being real. Let's pretend the doctor said, hey, you, watching the correct views right now. you got a brain tumor. I'm talking to you because there are a certain number of people who I don't know. I don't know how this works. I don't know if it works for certain cancers and maybe it hurts other cancers. I don't know. Go to Hemp Oil Girl. She's a lot smarter on this, again, than I ever want to be. But there's something here. And if you don't take anything else away from all the smile and humor I tried to give you, if you don't take anything away from the facts that I did give you, then please take this away. This isn't about getting high. This is about curing one of the most terrifying diseases known to modern history. And if marijuana has something to do with it, then so be it. 
This is from Anthony Gucci on Infowars.com, May 13th, 2013, and this is another somewhat dated article that I just simply could not get out of my head, and that's why you're listening to it. Corporate politics in business is, is business, as usual, inside the United States. I am once again shocked to report that the EPA has sided with industry lobbyists over public health and is approving a highly dangerous pesticide that the European Union, and that is most of Europe for those of you that don't know, recently decided to ban over fears of environmental devastation. Not only have neon... <laughs> Neonicinoid pesticides, N E O N, neon, I C O C O T I N O I D pesticides. That's worse than the four languages that I butcher. They have been linked, it says, repeatedly to mass bee deaths, also known as colony collapse disorder, that is to say, CCD. But the continued use of such pesticides threaten other aspects of nature and humans as well. This country is, seems to be wanting to commit suicide in terms of what the leadership allows to happen in the country. By that I'm saying India has banned Monsanto. China won't take the weed in, and China is the only uh, country in the world that has a worse food supply than the U.S. in terms of uh, quality. And I say that because of our GMO. That is not an insult to our farmers. I see, like, Green Acres, the little Pfeiffer guy playing as I speak. But no, no, no disrespect to the farmers. I'm talking about what uh, Monsanto and GMO has done. We okay things here that other countries that have worse food supplies than us still won't take into their country. And I'm going to go on. What's even more amazing is that the decision not only comes after the EU publicly discussed, and as a quote to it, if you go, a link to it, I should say, if you go to the article, the major dangers surrounding the use of the pesticides. But after the USDA released a report surrounding continued honeybee deaths and the related effects, a report in which they detailed pesticides to be a contributing factor, just the impact of the honeybees alone, and we now know that these pesticides, it says, are killing aquatic life. For you Russia fans, that means life in the waters and the oceans. And subsequently, the birds that feed upon them amounts to a potential, quote, $200 billion in global damages per year. We're talking about the devastation of over 100 crops from apples to avocados and plums. Two things here real quick. One, there's a lot of people listening to this that go, I'm happy that I haven't been stung by a bee because the bees have been dying for the last two years. Then there's everybody listening to this who has something other than a pumpkin for a head that realizes that this is an absolute disaster. The honeybees are one of the most important, vital things in the structure of things that lead to humans being able to live as humans do. Yeah, I put that in layman's terms. Rewind it, you'll get it. I didn't make it complicated. When the bees die in enough numbers, in a high enough percentage, the people die. How's that? I'm talking about being stung. Idiots. Funny story for those of you that listen. I'm on all night. Hell, why not do it? I got stung on the roller coaster, the Iron Dragon once, right in the thigh. You ever get stung on the roller coaster? Five seconds of cussing. Oh my god, that hurts like a son of a bitch. Alright, welcome back to the correct views. 
And there's countless scientists, it says, and a large number of environmental science groups speaking out on this. The EPA has no lack of information on the subject, and sure, there are some contributing factors to bee deaths. There's no question about that. It says we have an environment right now being hit with Monsanto's Roundup. Even in residential areas, we have chemical rain. Now listen to this. Please don't just tune out. We have insane amounts of EMF. That's not the man. Good though they were. But it's pretty clear that neonicinoid pesticides are at least a major contributing factor. In other words, the things that we are using to protect our food so that we can eat are the things that are going to lead to bee death, which is going to kill us. Beyond that, they have no place in the food supply to begin with, and I'm going to read a little more. The Pesticide Action Network, that is PAN, details the EU ban to ban to cut that, that came out, excuse me, the EU ban that came right before the EPA acceptance of the death-linked pesticide. Quote, The EU vote comes after significant findings by the European Food Supply Agency that these pesticides pose an unacceptable risk to bees, and I've explained why that's important, and their use should be restricted, along with habitat loss and pathogens. A growing body of science points to uh, these pesticides as a key factor in drastically declining bee populations. The more we use these things, the worse things always get. How many of you have noticed that? Monsanto was supposed to be the great knight in shining armor. Anybody remember that? What's it been? It's a bit an absolute nightmare. Uh, one more story before the break. I'm going to go to something new because I did a couple that were old. This is from the Wall Street Journal, so we're going to do some mainstream news here. How's that? Police clash against protesters in Istanbul Square. And then again, as two days ago, the Turkey's prime minister defended a police push to clear protesters from a central square in Istanbul on Tuesday that sparked clashes in the heart of the city following more than two weeks of nationwide demonstrations. Security forces moved into Taksim Square, the Istanbul epicenter of protests that happened around 7.30 a.m., it says, Tuesday, firing tear gas and water cannons while protesters threw rocks and Molotov cocktails. Battalions of police, which had ceded control of Taksim the day after nationwide protests flared May 31st, were positioned around the square's perimeter by 8 a.m. I'm going to read one more paragraph. The clashes began to break out in scenes from the square broadcast live on television. Turkey's currency sank to fresh 2011 lows, prompting a central bank to intervene and stabilize the lira. How many of you wonder if stabilize means to absolutely rip off the people? And again, I don't have a lot of money. I really don't. I get by, and God has blessed me with a very good job. But suffice to say, I'm not rich. Although you're welcome to make me rich. Not really. But every penny that you donate to me, I can promise you, goes to a better show. My point being, how many of you know what happened in Cyprus? It was a mess. So I think the, the, the easy solution to this is to realize the most important thing that you can do for yourself, that you can do in terms of keeping your currency safe, is simply owning gold, platinum, copper, I'm allergic to copper, uh, is something, you know, because if you put your money in the banks, there's absolutely nothing at all that promises you that these banks are going to leave that money safe for you. As a matter of fact, they probably are going to take it as, as soon as possible in the event of a disaster. So own things that do not depreciate. If there's one point to that whole article, that might not be what you were supposed to take away from it. But that's definitely what I took away from it. Guys, you're listening to The Correct Views. It is the spring cleaning show. 
I am going to remember to hit screen share and I'm going to make sure that my wonderful behind the scenes Queen Christelle reminds me to shut the screen share off. Which I guess I didn't do such a good job of yesterday. Alright guys, enjoy passing time. I will be back in five minutes or less. That is my band. That video was made on a budget of tens. I'm going to be as real as I can be here. I shot that video. Well, I didn't. I was on stage. That it was shot from a number of videos shot on my ever so famous $30 camera. I got it at the uh, dollar store. It's a miracle that video even got made. I want to give a shout out to Brandon Blight of uh, Blight vs. Blight. He built me a computer out of garbage found on the side of the road while he was a trash man. Um, I was working on my CD at the time, the band CD. Uh, you can still get it. Uh, we're not pushing it real hard now that we have better quality material. But it, it's, uh, it'd be, leave a comment and the, the correct views at hotmail.com. It's called Something More, Inter Something More Interesting. Thank you, Katie, for the name. Um, and halfway through producing the CD, as it were, the computer that I had died, and Brandon Blight of Blight vs. Blight, look them up, built me a computer, it still runs, believe it or not, uh, with the garbage fell on the side of the road. So that's, that's how that song was produced, and that's how that video was shot. 
It's a miracle it was ever made. Uh, it actually sounds really good. I'm a DJ. I play it in clubs and nobody ever says, it doesn't have the sound quality of other music. I've never heard that. So, way to go Brandon for helping me out. Uh, Infowars.com, Steve Watson. British ministers call for mass government snooping in the wake of Woolrich attack. May 23rd, 2013, again the spring cleaning show on the correct use. That means I'm going to new shows, as I just did. I'm going to new shows, as well as old shows. Or at least, uh, shows. Uh, I am going to new topics, as well as old topics. Uh, some stuff that I didn't get to and should have. And some new things that I absolutely must get to. And if it doesn't get covered between yesterday, today, and tomorrow, it gets whacked. And nothing but new stuff after this. That is spring cleaning. And that is why you're hearing about a, sh a uh, topic. Why do I want to say show so much? A topic, May 23rd, 2013. Because eh, this matters. Listen to this. Following the brutal murder of a young soldier in London, British politicians have called for the resurrection of a bill that was shelved last month that would see the creation of a dragnet surveillance database allowing police and investigator, investigation agencies to effectively monitor communications of everyone in the country. The so-called Snoopers Charter, it says, a proposed database of every one's internet and phone usage, uh, back to Snowden, as we talked about at the beginning, was blocked last month, it goes on, by the Deputy Prime Minister and Liberal Democrat Nick Clegg, who cited, quote, significant reduction in personal privacy, end quote. However, conservatives in government intentionally left the door open, and this quote, that is a link here that you can hit, for a revival of the legislation. Seizing on the horrific Woolrich attack, both conservative and Labour Party politicians are calling for the plan to be brought back. Lord West, the former First Sea Lord and Security Minister, told reporters that shelving the scheme on Clegg's say was so was a quote terrible mistake. That information is extremely important for our security services to be able to pin down people, find out who they were linked with and who was radicalized and who may have radicalized them, West told Sky News. So now they can say if you've talked to somebody, you're radicalized. But what if I bring an idiot on the correct views? Fortunately, the only guest on the correct views, not the media speaks, the correct views has been Christelle. She's not an idiot. Well, Christelle has spoken off camera. We did have Serenity. Remember that. We did have Serenity on the show yesterday. She's not an idiot and she's not a terrorist. But let's pretend. All right. Does that mean because I talk to a terrorist that I am now in danger of myself being called a terrorist? And guys, I'm being funny. The, for those of you that don't know, The Correct Views tries to appeal to people that don't normally watch the news. Look at my hair. Look who I am. I'm wearing a Calm Christ t-shirt. But guys, it's time to really focus on things as well. I'm not saying don't party. I'm not saying don't have fun. I'm not saying don't laugh. Hopefully you just laughed. If you didn't laugh, you at least thought I was an idiot, and that's fine for me. But, listen, because these things matter. They're trying to make it sound like guilt by association is grounds for calling one a terrorist or a threat or whatever name you want to put on it. And that's a dangerous, slippery slope. That is a bad precedent. That is not a direction that we want to go in. All of you see why, right? If not, let me know, and I will be more than happy to enlighten you. I'll teach you who Adolf Hitler was. Conservatives in government intentionally, oh, I already read that. Um, the inf that information is extremely important for our security services to be able to pin down people, find out who they were linked with, find out who radicalized them. Yeah, like I just said. The Conservative Minister for Faith and Communities, Baroness Warsi, W-A-R-S-I, also indicated that the Big Brother legislation should be resurrected. 
It is always the people that are in control who are always in favor of these things. But what most people don't understand is you are still more likely to die of a bee sting than you are from a terrorist attack. Even with the declining number of bees that I just reported on, you are still more likely to die of a bee sting than you are a terrorist attack. Guys, make sure you're going to TheMediaSpeaks.com. If you like what you are seeing, then do me a favor. Make sure you let people know that you do. Make sure that I am where I'm supposed to be in terms of... Oh, good, you can see my face. For a second, I thought you could not. <laughs> Ugly, don't you wish you couldn't? All right, um, this is another phony jobs report from a government that lies about everything uh, Paul Craig Roberts. June 8th, 2013. And the payroll jobs for May released today continues on with the fantasy. Goods producing jobs declined, with manufacturing losing 4,000 jobs, but the new economy produced 179,000 service jobs. I'm going to give you a little bit of an inside story of who I am, because if you're listening at this, the 512 in the morning, I'm going to, again, I'm going to make sure you can see me here, because we're going to Realville. Uh, yep, ugly as I've ever been. Hello, you. Alright, guys, I'm going to be as real as I can be. I work in the adult industry on many, many nights of my life. I'm a DJ. It's what I do. I go where they need to hear music, and I play it. I try to play as much real music, and by that I mean anything that isn't top 40, hip-hop, or R&B, current R&B, as much as possible, and I play that garbage when I must, because I need to keep my job. I'm lucky. I have a good job. But if you're listening to this, and you do in fact not have a good job, this might be why. It might be due to the number of outsourcing instances that have occurred that I spoke with, uh, spoke about last hour. It might have a whole lot to do with how we have allowed our country to send jobs overseas without us doing a damn thing about it. And for those of you watching on high def, it looks like my bars are going down. Go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up uh, the correct view, 6-13-2013. You'll get the end of this if this camera dies. Just go there. It's not going to be high def, but it's going to be fun. Listen to this. This is what our great jobs did. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and the jobs created are the usual lowly paid, non-exportable domestic service jobs of a third world country. That means the only jobs that anybody are getting are jobs they couldn't send away from us, and they are usually jobs that pay very poorly. Retail trade accounts for 27,700 of the jobs. Wholesale trade accounts 7,900. Ambulatory health care accounts, 15,300 jobs. Now, that needs to be important because the baby boomers right now are keeping the nursing homes and the hospitals and the ambulatory care centers and the undertakers very, very well paid. However, right behind them is Generation X, and there's not as many of us. When we start dropping like flies, there's going to be a lot of those jobs that don't exist anymore because there's not as many of us as there are Gen Xers. And that is the generation before me, for those of you that don't know. Waitresses and bartenders accounted for 38,100 jobs, and it gets to that in a moment. That's important. Local government, 13,000. Amusement, gambling, recreation, 12,000. And it goes on and on and on from there. Temp services were 25,600. Now listen to this. This is very, very, very important. Only 6,000 jobs, by the way, in computer system design and related. That's my major. They sent that away. By the way, if you need a website design, I'm the person to do it. For a decade, this has been the jobs profile of, quote, the world's most powerful economy, and by that they mean us, the U.S., it is the 
profile of third world India 40 years ago. That's us now. The jobs that made the U.S. the dominant economy have been moved offshore by corporations threatened by Wall Street with takeovers if they did not increase their profits. In other words, they increased their profits by sending our jobs overseas because the big boys on Wall Street decided what was going to happen. They decided what they were going to move and what they were going to shake and how they were going to get the most money for their own greedy little bastard selves and that's why we're in the situation we're in. That's what that paragraph said in layman's terms and that's probably why you listen. Are you listening? Good. The easiest way for corporations to increase profits is to take advantage of cheap labor in countries with massive quantities of unemployed labor. So if we believe the BLS report, that looks a lot like bullshit, doesn't it? If we believe the BLS report and the reported new jobs are not simply a product of faulty season adjustments and a faulty birth death model, why is the financial press happy that the economy can only create third world jobs? Which is what I just read to you. We created a whole bunch of jobs that don't pay anything. Why was the stock market up on the news that the U.S. economy has created 179,000 third world low paying jobs? Would rational markets be up on such discouraging news? Let me ask. Would you liberals be happy if George Bush had done this? Probably not. So if we believe, oh, they're gone. But do the jobs are the jobs really there? With retail sales going nowhere, and uh, again, retail has been plummeting for months. That is a uh, Target, Walmart, blah 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 blah. Don't forget the guy off that spoke out about how bad Walmart was doing was later fired. Why 35,600 jobs in the wholesale and retail trade when it's not going anywhere? With real median, median incomes declining, that is middle, why 38,100 more waitresses and bartenders? That means if there aren't so many people to spend money anymore and people have less money than they did, why did that go up? For every month, as long as I can remember, it says, the BLS reports numerous new jobs in waitresses and bartenders despite the long-term decline in real immediate income. The U.S. now has more hotel maids, bartenders, and waitresses than it has manufacturing workers. What that means in layman's terms, for those of you listening, there are now a whole lot of jobs for people that don't make any money, and all the people that made money in manufacturing lost their jobs because they sent those jobs to countries where they don't pay anything, and our country should have destroyed them for doing so. I'm a libertarian in this country. If you send stuff out of our country, I am in terms of destroying you! The services of maids, bartenders, waitresses, and government, it says, cannot be exported. Therefore, the U.S. trade deficit remains large and without exports to reduce it. A crisis, it says, in itself. What we've done is created a whole lot of new jobs to do menial work for the people to whom our jobs in some instances were sent to, at least when they stay here. You know what? This to me is just absolutely terrifying. Because the more you look at it and the more you study it, the more you analyze what they're talking about here the more you realize that this is going in a direction that is an absolute detriment to all of us. I mean, is the writing not absolutely on the wall here? <sighs> Spring cleaning correct views. I'm going to go ahead uh, to Lee Rockwell blog, June 3rd, 2013. I'm going to read the whole thing because it's short. Yet another attack on the Ron Paul curriculum. For those of you that don't know, the American hero, and that is Ron Paul, and that is Ron Paul, who achieved number four. I believe it was, uh, uh, obviously, well, it's questionable 
Obama over Romney, even though many votes were never counted and never addressed, and it may have well been a tie, it may have well been a Romney victory, and nobody wants to talk about it. Was I in favor of Romney? Is this sour grapes? Did you finally catch me? No, I voted for Gary Johnson. I supported Ron Paul in primaries, so don't even go there. Anyway, according to the official record, anyway. Obama, Romney, I don't know who took third, and Ron Paul. That's how popular this man was. On this time from Americans United, a group allegedly dedicated to the separation of church and state, Ron Paul has made a curriculum available to homeschoolers, people who choose to teach their children at home because the government school system is dumbing them down, to the point where they think that Beyonce has talent, and she does not. <laughs> Everyone agrees. Um, dumbing us down, dumbing their children down, what they've done is they've taken their kids into homeschooling. Well, I, I don't know how good of a teacher I am. I've learned a lot of things. I certainly have the knowledge to be a teacher, but whether I have the skill to be a teacher, I do not know. Well, Ron Paul came out with a curriculum for teaching children that basically makes it so that it can be done by the average person. So this is important. They get most things wrong, and you might expect, but they are clearly worried about Ron Paul's entrance into homeschooling in such a major way. They know that it undermines state schools. Yeah, it means that you might not have to learn everything on your own like I did, because your school system sucks. They also attack Gary North for not emphasizing on what they say are his religious views. But why isn't this a good thing to these people? In fact, this curriculum is Ron Paul's, not Gary's, nor Tom Wood's. Good point. Note, by the way, that the separators do not applaud Ron Paul's expansion of the non-state sector in education, since their real agenda is, in fact, Christianating and state-loving, not separation of church and state. And I've seen this more and more and more, in growing numbers all the time. It's cool to hate the Christian, I'm not a Christian, it's cool to hate the Christian, but look, what they do to the Christians now is precisely what they do to you tomorrow. Historically, on the higher percentage, and Christians have done some horrible things, but on a higher percentage, Christians have brought a lot of good into this world, and it might not be so wise to write them off when they might be the only ones that, in fact, really have your back at all. I'm going to go back to an older one, Mike Snyder, one of my favorite article writers. Uh, Economic Collapse, May 30th, 2013. 37 million Americans currently have outstanding student loans, and the delinquency rate on those student loans has now reached a level never seen before. According to a new report that was just released by the U.S. Department of Education, it says, 11% of all student loans are at least 90 days delinquent. 